Hey everyone, my name is Avery, my pronouns are he, him, and you're watching Two Feather TV from Two Feather Plugs. TwoFeatherPlugs.com Question of the day. Which is better, the taper method or dead stretching? Well, after a lot of research, a lot of personal experience stories, and consulting a piercer who has experience for 21 years, we've come to the conclusion that it honestly depends on your body and your level of patience. So with dead stretching, it's kind of a waiting game. We recommend at least six to eight weeks in between sizes, and if you're going bigger than that, even longer than that. Maybe 12 to 14, depending. But what dead stretching is, is when you take those healed lobes and you go up one millimeter increments with a single flare glass plug. And honestly, that's a great way to stretch, especially if you're doing it at home. It leaves less room for you to have tears or blowouts. So if you have the patience for dead stretching, please consider it. But here's a problem that can arise with dead stretching. Sometimes our bodies don't naturally stretch like that. And there are personal experiences of people waiting three or four years and their ears have not budged. And the recommendations for dead stretching says that it's not supposed to hurt, so if you try and force it in, you're doing it wrong. Thus, th these people aren't getting the stretching experience. That's kind of where using a taper comes in. But the thing with tapers and the reason why they get such a bad rep is the misuse and abuse of them. Now this is from our taper kit that we sell on twofeatherplugs.com. And what we give you is the taper and the tunnel for the correlating size. Now what you're supposed to do with tapers is use this to size up to that size and immediately follow with your tunnel. And then you keep the tunnel in to heal. But what a lot of people do, and what I'm guilty of as well when I was younger, is they use this as an earring. This is kind of like keeping the hammer in the wood instead of using the nail. And while it looks really cool to have a spike sticking out of your ear, when you wear this as jewelry, you risk uneven stretching, you risk it tearing, micro tears, or worst case scenario, it pops you right in the neck. The professional piercer that we consult that has been doing this for 21 years uses tapers, but he uses tapers with bowls on the end so he can put the jewelry in and immediately put the correct tunnel in. And he only uses tapers for the smaller sizes. Once you get bigger, then you still have to dead stretch. Which, if you're one of those that it stays stagnant, you can use weights to help out. So all in all, the war on dead stretching and the taper method is honestly a war of preference and body type. At least that's what we've gathered. Dead stretching, especially for the smaller sizes, is kind of a new age thing, especially since they have figured out that using a taper can cause micro tears and eventually in long term hurt your ears but that's also if they're not done properly. The taper method is kind of an old school way, where a professional piercer will take several tapers and skip sizes to the size that you want, to a certain point. And there's even the method where you literally punch a hole in your ear and stretch that. But all in all, stretching your ears is a body modification. And if you're not comfortable modifying your body by yourself, please, we always recommend going to a professional piercer. And yes, that is a thing. I didn't know it at the time, probably would have saved my lobes, but now I'm here to tell you. This video or any other videos that we have, please go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel and follow us for more. And honestly, I want to hear the community's feedback on this war, so please leave a comment. And as always, may your stretching journey be safe and swift. And for you.